this video, we're going to talk about the history of the Canadian pension model, which was started by Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. Then we're going to talk about how other pensions in Canada adopted this model, with an example from the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. And finally, we're going to discuss why this model is so difficult to replicate around the world. Less than 4% of the world's public companies are based in Canada. When we look at the biggest 10 companies on the planet, well, none of them are based in Canada. And when we look at the size of the Canadian economy based on GDP, it's not first, second, or third. In fact, it's the 10th biggest economy in the world. And so, for a country that is this small on a world stage, why does it represent three of the 10 biggest investors in private equity in the world? Well, it's because of the unique Canadian pension model. Now, before we go through the Canadian pension model, let's recall what a pension is. A pension is a sum of money that is built up over an employee's lifetime. And when that employee retires, that employee is paid out benefits or a pension from that sum of money. Now that you understand what a pension is, let's talk about how the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan started the Canadian pension model. The Ontario Teachers Pension Plan is a pension plan for teachers in the province of Ontario in the country of Canada. Between 1917 and 1990, the assets for the pension plan were invested in government bonds. As such, the return from the pension assets were not sufficient to pay current and future retirees. You see, the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan is a defined benefit pension plan, which means when teachers retire, they receive benefits that are calculated based on characteristics such as years of service and salaries. In 1990, after investing in government bonds for over 73 years, the pension plan had a deficit of $3.6 billion. So in 1990, the government of Ontario, combining with the Ontario Teachers Federation, formed the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan Board, a privatized entity with independent governance that had the intention of increasing returns on pension assets so that Ontario teachers would receive their benefits when they retire. In 1990, this privatized entity invested not just in government bonds, but also in public and private assets. What the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan did, and there's a case by INSEAD about this, is they invested directly into private companies. Now this is a pension. This was revolutionary at the time, to have a pension by private companies. And at first, Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, well, they didn't do so well with their investments, but they learned from their mistakes and they persisted. Today, Ontario Teachers Pension Plan has one of the biggest direct investing teams on the planet, and they have an excellent track record. Now, let's look at how one pension adopted the Canadian pension model. And for this, we'll look at the largest pension in Canada, the Canada Pension Plan, which has the investment arm, Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, CPPIB. In 2005, CPPIB poached Mark Wiseman from the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. Wiseman led the private equity program at Teachers and was brought to CPPIB to build its private equity program. Now, did that work? Well, here we are in 2020, and CPPIB currently is the largest investor in private equity on the planet. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the Canadian pension model. You have to realize it doesn't just include investing directly in private equity. It involves investing in private equity through fund investing, co-investing, and secondary investing, 
but it also includes investing in other asset classes as well, such as real estate and infrastructure. The Canadian pension model has resulted in excellent returns. And so, if the Canadian pension model is so fantastic, why don't all pensions around the world use this model? Well, I'll give you three reasons. The first is independence, the second is attracting talent, and then the third are the skills required. So first, let's talk about independence. And when I say independence, I mean independent governance. For example, both the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan and CPPIB have separate investment arms that have independent directors. This allows the investment arm to act in ways that traditional pensions are unable to act. Number two is attracting talent. Due to their unique structure, Canadian pension plans are able to pay competitive wages to attract top-level talent. In other areas of the world, it is difficult for pensions, especially public pensions, to gain approval to pay competitive wages for investment professionals. Number three are the skills required. Even if pensions are able to pay competitive wages to attract top-level talent, it requires quite a lot of skill to build a model to invest in many asset classes, including investing directly into private companies. So let's say a pension has the right structure that has independence. It has the ability to attract top-level talent. And that talent has the skills required to build a model similar to the Canadian pension model. Then the next question is, should that pension invest directly, invest through funds, or invest a hybrid approach? So fund investing is a low maintenance approach. You don't really need to attract top level talent because the top level talent works for the private equity funds. Now top level talent is expensive. And so if you have a fund investing approach, you most likely will be paying 2% management fee and a 20% upside. So does this make sense? Well, it depends how big your private equity portfolio is. If it's really large, let's say $10 billion in private equity, well, to pay 2% management fees on $10 billion, well, that's $200 million a year. And so another approach you can do is you can do a hybrid approach with fund investing and direct investing. And that will include some co-investing as well. You can select private equity funds that give you co-investment rights, and which means that they give you access to direct deals within the fund. Through that, you may get great deal flow through the private equity funds and able to build your direct investing practice. If you truly are able to attract top level talent, then you might be able to invest directly without getting too many co-investment opportunities. In this video, we talked about the history of the Canadian pension model, which was started by Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. And then we talked about how this model was adopted by other pensions in Canada, with an example from CPPIB. And finally, we discussed why the Canadian pension model is so difficult to replicate around the world. If you have any thoughts or opinions on any topics discussed in this video, please leave a comment below.